All right, well, we've been talking about finances, and I hope I didn't uh, didn't go too fast last time. Let's uh, uh, let's um, pick up uh, where we left off then. So, financial freedom. Financial freedom comes through. This is how you become financial free: giving to God first off. We talked about that with the tithes and offering. Giving to the poor, those who are who are needy. Um, and also giving to fellow Christians as shown in Scripture. Okay. Now keep in mind, Scripture does give clarification though. If the person is not working, okay. If the person is living immorally, if the person is not under the authority of the church. So we're talking about people who are part of the church, who are fellowshipping with the church, who are who are in there. Okay, there. But also be careful about giving to other people in other congregations. Okay, first off, you're going to cause a church conflict where people are going to want to come over because you're the giving church. Um, but also, uh, you're going to ca cause a conflict because that's not your uh, flock. So, uh, as well as persistently working, financial freedom comes through working. People are going to tell you, oh, you you get more money. This this is no. It comes through. Working and wisely managing your accounts and belongings. See, if you take care of something, you won't have to buy another one. Oh, I need a new car. Why haven't you been taking care of your old car? See, I mean, you need to you need to stop and say, are you just simply wanting something, or do you actually need something? We're going to talk about differentiating the two in just a second. Um, but I want to look up some some scriptures here. Matthew 25. Um, actually, let me turn to Proverbs 22.7 first, and then we'll look at the Matthew one. Proverbs 22.7 says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower becomes the lender's slave. So be careful with borrowing money. Um, Find out what the interest rates on these things are. Matthew 25, 31 through 46. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered um, before him, and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? Did you notice the emphasis of the righteous? The righteous don't even realize that what they're doing is for Christ because they're, they're loving on God, they're loving on people. They actually mean it. it see, so when you're when you're a, pl a place of, of adding up your tithes, look, God, look how much tithes I've paid to you. Watch out that that doesn't become a thing of um, that, that that doesn't become a thing of distracting you from being righteous. Um, once again, the righteous person has his eyes focused on, on God. Um, so I think we're in uh, verse 36, I think. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent you, that you did it, to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. You did it to me. Now look what he turn, turns and says to the others. Then he will also say to those on, on, on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal flames which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Realize with finances that this life is not all there is. One day you will be in heaven, or not, I mean, depending on whether you got saved or not. Uh, but hopefully one day you will be in, and be in heaven, and you'll realize that all those things that you cared so much for on earth didn't matter at all. 
you fought so much for the finances, so much for this and that, so much to, to become successful or to have more of the things that you wanted. And in the end, you couldn't take it with you. But the things that mattered were the things that were in service to the king. Then they themselves also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? See, the person, the wicked person, these people are cast out, they're completely oblivious to the needs of those around them. They were so focused on themselves, they didn't even realize this. Or a stranger, naked or sick, or in prison and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And um, 2 Thessalonians 3, 7, we're talking about being wise with the things that the Lord has blessed you with. Because rest assured, everything you have is a blessing from the Lord. Um, 2 Thessalonians 3, 7 through 12 says, um, For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example, because we did not act in an undisciplined manner among you. We did not act in an undisciplined manner. Are you acting in an undisciplined manner with your finances and with the other areas of your life? Or are you acting in a disciplined manner? Um, for, for, uh, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with labor and hardships we kept working night and day so that we would not be a burden to any of you. See, they had the right to do these things, and they didn't. Not because we do not have the right to this, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you so that you would follow our example. For even when we were with you, we used to give you this order. If anyone is not willing to work, then he is not to eat either. For we hear that some among you are leading an undisciplined life, doing no work at all, but acting like busybodies. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to work in quiet fashion and eat their own bread. So once again, there is discretion on who you should give to. This is just one of the examples of discretion. Um, Proverbs 13.11. And Proverbs really has just a lot of good things, steps to say. If you are a leader anywhere in your household, I mean a, a mother or father, um, um, if you are um, in, in, in leadership, in, in work, in ministry, anything, you need to be reading Proverbs. It's just a great book that will that will give you help you learn discretion. Um, anyways, uh, Proverbs thirteen eleven: Wealth obtained by fraud dwindles, but the one who gathers by labor increases it. See, the world will tell you if you do it, if if you get um, there, there's get rich fast uh, schemes that there's. Um, that there's uh, you know easier ways to get money. This is how you get money. You work hard for it and you manage it well. That's how you get money. Um, <clears throat> but once again, you have to stay. Um, you have to stay committed to your job, and we'll talk about that in a, in a future lesson um, about responsibility, about having a good conscience. Um, Matthew six thirty three says. Um, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. If, by the way, if you're seeking first his kingdom, you're not going to be focused on the things. So let me just kind of give a little bit of a disclosure there. It's talking about seeking the Lord and remembering to keep the physical things in um, in perspective. Luke chapter 16, 10 through 13, and verse 15 says... He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much, and he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth, who will entrust the true riches to you? Um, and then going through 13, uh, and if you have been not you have not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for uh, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in wealth. And then in 15, and he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves on the side of men, but God knows your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. Just remember that just because you want something doesn't mean that God wants you to have it. So, God gives money to provide for needs. These are the reasons for money. To provide for needs. Okay? And what is a need? We'll talk about that in a second. Um, to confirm his direction, whether or not he wants you to go somewhere, sometimes he'll withhold money so you don't do something. The only bad thing is that nowadays, when God withholds money, we take it as a sign to take out a loan. To go to school, to buy a house, to this, to that, to the other thing. Sometimes God just wants us to be patient and wait. 
I know that's not the favorite word of people in America, but trust me on this one. Um, and also uh, for us to give to others. And lastly, to show his power in trying times. Those are the purposes of money. So look at how you spend money. Look at how much money you have. And ask these questions. Am I, it, it, do I have what I need? Do I have food for today? Not, not for tomorrow, for today. Do I have clothes for today? So, um, to confirm, confirm his direction, am I spending money somewhere that I could stop? For instance, I, I criticize strongly those people who say, oh, I need money. Do you have a job? Do you have cable when you can't even afford rent? Do you have a phone that you had to pay for and now you have a contract that you had to pay for that you can't afford? See what I mean? That's not wise. And then going to somebody else saying, okay, now you are supposed to provide for me money when you haven't been wise with the money that you did have. What did Jesus just say in Luke? See, we read these accounts and we just kind of write it off rather than saying, now how does this apply to me though? So, um, to show his power in trying times. There is nothing quite like seeking after the Lord, especially when you're really in a pickle, um, especially in times when you, when you truly believe that you didn't do anything wrong. Um, and you're just in this place of not having any money, and you pray, and God just has these divine ways. You know, I've heard so many stories of of people uh, being led to give money to other people, of of you know people opening the door and, and food being left at their door. You know, things that things that are truly good things that people have done for these people that were genuinely in need that God provided. Um, obviously, He used people though, but you know, God did provide. Um, so Psalm 37, verse um, 21 through 22. The wicked borrows and does not pay back, but the righteous is gracious and gives. See, the things that a wicked person does leads them to a place where they have debt and they can't pay anything back, so they don't. But a righteous person, because he handles all that he has righteously, is finds himself in positions where he can be gracious and give because he's been wise with his money. Um, righteous people don't necessarily have more money than, than a wicked person. They just use it properly. For those blessed by him will inherit the land, but those cursed by him will be cut off. Um, so, a need, however, is something you must have in order to survive. Food. You have to have food. Water. You have to have water. Clothes. You cannot work. You cannot really live, especially nowadays in, in America, without clothes. Now, in some areas of the world, that really isn't a factor that much, but here it kind of really is. Especially it seems that you'll be arrested if you don't. Um, and obviously, scripture. These are things that you absolutely need. What about a house? It never says that a house is a need. And a house is a, is a nice thing to have. It's, it's good to have a shelter of your head, and it'll be extremely uncomfortable if you don't. But ultimately, you don't need it to survive. Remember that. When, before you get into a, into a mortgage, remember, this is a long commitment. A lot can happen in 15 or 30 years. A lot can happen in 15 or 30 years. So, when you are buying something, always ask, um, should I buy this, not can I buy this? See, oftentimes we ask, well, well, can I can I buy this? Yeah, I have the money for that. That's the kind of thing that gets us into debt. Always ask and said, should I buy this? Is it a need or is it something that you simply want? And when you start differentiating that, and I tell you what, challenge yourself for one year. Say, I will, I'm not buying anything except for those things that I absolutely need to survive. And see how much, first off, how much spending you cut out. Second off, how much more money you have to give to the poor and to do those things. Um, and don't just look at the money that you have to give to the poor. Actually, give to the poor. Uh, Proverbs. No, I do want to give a little bit of a disclosure. Sometimes when we give to the poor, we may, we have all kinds of stipulations. Uh, I'm not going to give to this person because they're just going to spend on alcohol. Well, God never gave you though and, gave, and told you to do that. He told you to give to the poor. See what I mean? Now, obviously, don't give. Give with discretion. Like, let's say you know somebody who who needs money and. Um, and, and they're a drug addict, and you, you know them. You know what they're going to do. So buy the things for them and give it to them. But don't just not give at all. See what I mean? We, we try to overcome and say, oh, they're just going to use this money for alcohol. So buy the things that they need, that they need new shoes, that they need clothes, that they need food. You know, 
Point them to place where they can stay. Point them to, to homeless shelters, to food pantries. They're, they are out there. Or if they aren't, heck, start one. But uh, don't just look and see the need and say they're just going to use it on drugs or alcohol and just walk away. There are other solutions besides being stingy. So uh, Proverbs 13, um, 18 says, Poverty and shame will come to him who neglects, a dis neglects discipline, but he who regards reproof will be honored. He who regards reproof will be on honored. But uh, poverty and shame will come to him who neglects discipline. And that's because when you're undisciplined, it, set, it goes to the other areas of your life. Okay? So, um, also, uh, Matthew 6, 19 through 24. Come on now. Here we go. Matthew 6, 19 through 24 says, um, Do not st uh, store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where, and where thieves do not break in or steal. Now keep in mind, he's not talking about not having a retirement plan. That's not what he's talking about at all. He's talking about having your mindset on the money rather than having your having your eyes set on um, God. Remember, money is good if it's used properly. It's bad if it's not. So, once again, it seems like he's more talking about seeking after the money. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So he keeps talking about treasure, the money as your treasure. Um, the eye is the lamp of the body. So then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is dark and darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love um, love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So, um, that takes us to the next point. Let me kind of move this little um, thingy here, if I can, there. Um, so, don't throw money away on wasteful or impulsive spending. Um, for instance, when you go shopping when you're hungry, that would be impulsive spending. Um, when you see a TV that you want really, really bad, so you buy it that you didn't have money for. That would be way, uh, impulsive spending. Eating out a lot, that would be wasteful spending when you could spend that le less than half on just um, on making something yourself. Um, alcohol, don't buy alcohol or cigarettes if you already can't afford um, your rent. See what I mean? These are things that are not necessities. Um, and we're trying to talk about this, about how to create a spending flow. Um, also, I see so many people who don't have gas money, and then I see them running around in their cars. So don't drive your car everywhere if you already don't have gas money. Then you're just going to end up asking people for gas money that you're just going to waste on driving around. Only use your car if you absolutely have to. Um, anyways, um, also, watch out for payments and those kinds of things. Um, buying things on payments. What places like Aaron's Furniture and stuff does is, is they'll say, okay, here, this is for this thing. But um, you can buy it on payments rather than spending all of it, you know, buying it all at once. Well, that sounds real good, except you end up overpaying by a lot. And uh, usually that kind of thinking gets you into debt, okay? Which technically that is debt. Um, so be, be careful with buying things on payments. And also, you know, if you're buying something on payments big like a car, keep in mind that your payment isn't going to just be the payment that they quoted you. It's going to also be your insurance. It's going to also be maintenance. See, when you buy a house, when you rent a house, the landlord fixes things. When you buy a house, you have to pay for all the repairs. If there's a if if a, if a if a pipe bursts, you have to pay for it. Um, it's no longer somebody else's responsibility. Um, and so, okay, and so some verses for that um, are Proverbs twenty one seventeen. Twenty one seventeen says, He who loves pleasure will become a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not become rich. See that? Denying temptations, living a disciplined life, leads to disciplined finances. Um, and also, 
um, 1 Timothy 6.10. For the love of money is a root of all sorts of money, I'm sorry, of all sorts of evil, and some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. See, he's not, he never wants there to say that money was bad. Okay. Um, so, uh, we're going to wrap up here on the end of this slide, I think, and we'll pick up next week with, I mean, next lesson with, with more steps to financial freedom. Thank you for watching.